Reese, welcome back to uh, Songcraft. Even though you were here, well, you were here last month, but it wasn't recorded, so this is the first time you have an interview. I want to say right away, you've got two instrumentals that you've done. Yeah. Um, Basil the Great and Memory, yeah. or Memories, plural. Memory. Memory singular. Um, your, your instrumental style here is, is um, uh, very intricate. That, that's the first thing that, that I noticed, but also moody. I just, uh, a personal note, I just watched Winterbone yesterday, the movie uh, about people in Appalachia, kind of a murder mystery, mm -hmm. uh, but, but very, uh, very uh, um, naturalistic. And the music in there is similar to this in, in a way, you know, moody. Moody, I, yes. I, I love that. What brings you to, to that style? And it's very, uh, it's very innovative. It's very creative. It's, it, there's no major chords happening there, are there? Not uh, many. No, no. no. I, I make use of what I can. Uh, the way I, I started learning how to play, I, I would just imitate what I would hear, you know, from other musicians. And, uh, is there any one big influence or, or uh, several? Probably Jimmy Page is probably my biggest influence. I noticed Most, that mostly before because too. Yeah. you know I I went from listening to country music and then I, I listened to Led Zeppelin and they just kind of propelled me into you know this sense that hey you can pick up an instrument and you know you can make it an aspect of the song. It's not Still, it's not just about a singer who can. Yeah. Still, Jimmy Page doesn't pick up acoustic all that often. Oh, actually, I think if you find oh, yeah? a lot of people tend to think that he plays acoustic more often. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. if, if you listen yeah. to a lot of uh, Zeppelin material, the first two albums are, are mainly heavy electric. Yeah, kind of. It's yeah. kind of, you know, blues just, rock. Uh -huh. You know, and that cemented their, you know, their, their heavy metal sort of... Uh, yeah, the third one, that they came in with some acoustic yeah, things. And right. then, then the fourth one after that, and pretty much from there, I mean, it wasn't oh, okay. until their 77 or 76 album presence that they mm -hmm. got back to being that kind of uh, really electric band. Oh, okay. Speaking of which, uh, are you thinking of develop developing it to, to a band stage? Uh, Have you ever thought of that? I haven't given a whole lot of thought okay. to it. Mostly because the way I write, it's kind of like... Um, the way I'll put it is that... that mm -hmm. take, take War Harper, for example. He, he's been yeah. in a few bands, you know, and he's he tried... He's, he's tried to push his music forward in kind of a popularized sort of way, you know, with, with bands. And, and the way he described it was that it just didn't work. His, his writing mm -hmm. style and the way that he thought of We talked to this before, Roy Harper, yeah. uh, the singer-songwriter from yeah. England. Yeah. But uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, he uh, just, the, the, the way he wrote his music, it didn't really mesh with, you know, say, three or four other guys. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. You know, the way I, I'd love to get down and, you know, jam with somebody, but whenever I'm writing, you know, a song, it's kind of like, you know, this is what I want. And, yeah. and e even in that respect, my, my music is, is, you know. You'd have to find a collaborator who yeah. really understood exactly what you're doing. To, and another yeah. thing is that if it really came down to me being in a band, I'm not sure I'd, I'd really <laughs> make the cut because uh, well. <laughs> not, not only my, my, my style is kind of, you know, I like, it timing. flows. Yeah. yeah, the timing is... is uh, uh, I do it whenever I feel appropriate. You know? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I haven't yeah. really, like, like you know, I, I wouldn't... I'm not so sure I'd be able to just sit down and record these songs and, you know... But, you know, then again, you, you take your time. Um, I think of some of the great jazz bands that just jammed and jammed, and, or just jazz musicians get together and, you know, they go with a certain feeling. And sometimes you can luck into that kind of musician in rock. It's rare, you yeah. know, and, and it takes a unique kind of chemistry, but when it happens, you know, it's worth holding together. In other words, the band flows where it's going and everyone's listening. Actually, Zeppelin is a good example of that. All the jamming they did, you know, um, every track is different, and they, they knew that would, be, it would happen yeah. that way. Every performance they did of every song, different. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew where, you know, where they were going, just osmosis. Instinctively. Which, which also explains exactly why they disbanded once Bonzo died. Right, right, exactly. Cause, cause they, no one else, you know, yeah. was, was in the circuitry with them. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a very sort of intimate relationship, and, and you know, yeah. who knows what I'd do in a sort of... And there are, mu there are musicians like that. It, it's kind of rare, 
But, you know, when you find them, I, I've known a couple bands that, you know, worked in rock. Yeah. But at the same time, they, a trio named, uh, they called themselves Arkansas Man back in San Francisco many years ago. Um, and at first, when I first heard the drummer, I thought, that guy can't even keep a beat. He really. And, uh, and he played like, like a caveman, you know. But uh, um, when he got with the right performers, um, it, it was really magic what, what they did. And it can uh, happen. Yeah, it has to do a lot with uh, what your conception of music is and like, you know, what you feel you want to express in mm -hmm. your music. Like, uh, for me, to me, all the music I listen to has always been much more instrument, you know, uh, heavy. And, and, uh -huh. and to me, you know, you can write amazing lyrics and you, you, can, you can write the best lyrics. You, it could be like, you know, like a poem, you know, like, like a slice of a novel or mm -hmm. something. But for me, at least, if it's not, you know, given to me, in, in, if it doesn't sound, you know, sad. Right, you know, right. Totally. No use putting uh, lyrics on top of something, yeah. you know, unless unless you definitely have have uh, something to put in there that yeah. that you know is going to enhance it. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no reason. To I mean, otherwise, it. you might might as well just be you know a beat poet and just sit there and you yeah. know, read off of a piece of paper. Right. Well, you know, the beat poets. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, they they would do things and they'd have a guy with a bongo sitting yeah. in the back, you know, keep keeping that kind of beat. So, so that that was part of the jazz influence too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I can sort of hear that happening for you if it happens, you know. But it, you kind of you kind of have to want it to happen or or fall into a situation where where it's happening. Well, like well that. here's the thing. I mean, like mm -hmm. people talk about like a rock and roll fantasy. Like like if if, if your music suddenly became majorly popular, what yeah. would you what would your vision of being famous be? And you know, strangely enough, mine isn't you know standing on a stage with a no. you know. <laughs> The Gibson double neck, like Jimmy Page, playing yeah. to like a, a stadium of 400,000 people. Mine's yeah. like sitting on a little stool in some little, you know, folk club like Roy Harper. Just yeah, so many, so many musicians out there, they may be good, but their goal is, is fame and money yeah. instead of having their music understood. You know, yeah. that should be the number one goal. The fame and money, if they happen, if they get the right momentum, fine, but, but that shouldn't be the number one. Yeah. You know, I mean, they could be fancy fast, whatever, who yeah. cares? You know, <laughs> it's got to be that, that communication. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you have uh, written some songs with lyrics, no? Uh, I've written no? one song with lyrics. And, Were you uh, going to? No. I'm okay, not. okay, <laughs> that, fine. You know, I, I, I like the instrumental. I haven't even rehearsed it, so if I attempted it, I, I'd probably forget one of, you know, I, I wasn't expecting to play that one at all. I, but you can tell I'm always thinking a step ahead, and I, I hear what you do, and I'm thinking, <laughs> but I'm also thinking this. If you uh, had some visual um, in mind of something and your music went on top of it, you know, like a mo movie soundtrack, um, can you sometimes in your head see something happening that would work? Uh, or you, it, it doesn't have to be it, visual. It depends. Mm -hmm. Whenever I write a song, um, it's very kind of like, you know, in the moment. Like if I, if I start writing something, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know I need to finish it that night. I'm writing it. Otherwise, it's not going to end up to be the same song. Uh -huh. You know, and like, like I'll just sit there and I'll be playing the same strumming pattern, you know, the same like three or four chords over and over again until it's just totally, you know, inside me. Because I know if I put down the guitar and I go to bed and I wake up, I'm not going to be able to remember what I was oh. saying. <laughs> What's your method of recording it when you, you get a, a, a song idea? Or? I don't. I just, I just play until uh, it's until you remember it. memory. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've had a problem, yeah. Um, I have to have something to record it on. Yeah. Uh, or I'll forget it. I'll say, oh, this is great. How could I possibly forget it? Made that mistake so many times, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay, well, what's your, uh, you're doing another song. Um, yeah. What's the title? Uh, I played this before at one of the other, uh, not, not song crafters, but it was uh, another night I was here. Uh, it's called Crusade. Uh-huh. And is there any story behind how it developed? Um... It's it's one of my uh, most recent songs. Out of probably out of all the songs I would have been playing tonight, this is probably the most recent one that I would have tried. Oh, okay, good, good. And uh, it's kind of uh, more of a dark and. Okay. I wanted to ask you a question about the capo, but go ahead. Yeah, it was kind of a it's kind of a dark and plotting sort of uh, uh, 
song, and the reason I gave it the title Crusade is because, you know, most of people think of the Crusades as, you know, like, you know, a holy war, whereas I kind of saw it, you know, in a different light. Oh, sure. So, so you know, that if kind you're of... On the, if you're on the wrong end of the Crusades, it could be pretty, yeah. pretty ugly. Um, I noticed on, on the last song, yeah. did you put the capo in a way so that the high E was open? Yes, I did. That's unique. Is that something you um, uh, that's, that's something... saw someone else do, or...? Well... <laughs> Because uh, I've never seen that before. Uh, actually, uh, I got the idea from watching uh, Dimitri Martin do a little comedy skit. And Who? I, Dimitri Martin, he's a, he's a comic. Oh. And, and I noticed he, he plays guitar, but you know, he just uses it you know, for his comedy to sort of you know, give like a little folky thing to you know, tell uh -huh. his jokes ever. But, but he, he was just playing, and he had the high E string open. You know, and I was fiddling And if he around. can do it, you can do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I have to try that sometime. I, I, I don't think I've, I don't mess with capos too much, but it's, it could be a unique kind of tuning. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll let you go there. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, yeah.